hear a lot from some on the benefits of firing on with unconventional gas extraction, uh, including, it seems rather surprisingly, from backbenchers from the Conservative Party today, uh, and perhaps the government should be listening rather more closely to those voices in their own party mm. about this Very issue. Well. Um, but there's a, you know, we hear about the jobs it will create, the energy gap it will fill, and so on. There's really quite a Trumpesque glee with which these extravagant claims are made, uh, and that seems somewhat at odds with the reality of what this messy, dirty process would offer. If the UK government wants to take an evidence-based approach, then they will also be forced to consider a little more seriously the overwhelming weight of scientific evidence supporting climate change. They must balance this fact against the rather weaker case to press down the accelerator in a rush to frack the English countryside. Now, it can be argued one way or another uh, about the level of risks involved in the shale gas extraction process, such as the possibility of groundwater contamination or the danger of induced earthquakes. There are a lot of unknowns that need more research, and I don't wish to dwell on the points that have been made very ably by others. What we do know that these are genuine concerns because there are examples of it happening in places where fracking has been more rapidly pursued, leading to many countries like the Netherlands, for example, announcing plans to bring shale gas extraction to an end. And you have to ask why even citizens of the city of Denton in Texas, amongst the pioneers of fracking, have been trying to have it banned from their own backyards. Well, now, uh, yeah, very quickly, yes. Um, I'm opposed to fracking. The majority, my constituents are uh, opposed to fracking, and we've heard the majority of MPs speaking uh, today opposed to fracking. That's because of the concerns of their constituents, largely. Uh, can she reflect on the position that my constituents are in with the approach that the Scottish Government has taken uh, compared to the uh, constituents of other colleagues across this House yeah. and the approach that this UK Government has taken? Yeah. Yes, yeah. Uh, absolutely. I mean, I, I think all of us who represent Scottish constituencies are very pleased at the sort of much more cautious, evidence-based approach that the Scottish Government has been taking to this, and I would hope that the UK Government uh, could learn from their example. Um, Now, perhaps a a more thorough regulatory regime will reduce the likelihood of some of the worst of these public health and safety hazards we've seen in the States and elsewhere, but frankly, I wouldn't trust this Government to make sure that those checks and balances are robust enough, and the rewards are simply not worth the risks. Uh, I hope care will be taken to properly address the public concerns that have been expressed across England. But, again, listening to people is not a great strength of this government either. Instead, it seems the UK government is intent on slashing red tape and fast-tracking fracking through the planning process, bypassing local democracy and those pesky protesters who get in the way of things. I do not have a lot of faith that they will... Not, uh, that they will put public interest before that of big businesses. Now, even if it was established that fracking could be done safely, even if the considerable environmental impacts of this process could somehow be removed, no amount of regulation would prevent it from being a fresh new source of greenhouse gas emissions, and that is really not the way to go. Yeah. You can disregard the evidence on climate change, deny its existence, look the other way, whistle a happy tune, but like all destructive diseases, the longer you leave it, the harder it becomes to fight. Climate change is the biggest man-made crisis this planet is facing, far bigger even than the Buroch that that is known as Brexit. These school children who took to the streets calling for action are right and they deserve to be listened to. They are fed up with politicians carrying on as normal, people who are stuck in the past but who have the power to rob them of their futures. Now, it's undeniable we have a long way to go to move away from our reliance on oil and gas, both economically and in our lifestyle choices. Offshore gas will still play a role in the UK's energy mix for the foreseeable future, and I fully recognise the continued continued importance of the jobs that are currently dependent on the industry. But governments must pull together internationally to tackle climate change, and this will require us to move away from our fossil fuel dependence, not embrace new forms. Diving headfirst into onshore fracking explorations is completely the wrong direction for energy policy. And the good news is, though, that we don't need to desperately seek more gas under people's homes in order to keep on the lights. We have the onshore and offshore renewable technologies needed to establish a successful and sustainable energy industry. Scotland is leading the world in marine renewable Mm -hmm. energy and is very lucky to have a highly skilled workforce to deploy and the wind and the waves to be harnessed. 
with a quarter of Europe's tidal and offshore wind resources and 10% of its wave potential, this is where the unwavering focus, focus for government support should be. Yeah, yeah. Powers to issue and manage onshore oil and gas licences is devolved, and the debate over fracking takes on a very different flavour at Holyrood. There's a majority in the Scottish Parliament who oppose progressing fracking and underground gold gasification developments. The Scottish Government has conducted uh, extensive research and uh, continues to engage widely with the public on the issue. In the more than 60,000 responses, 99% were opposed to fracking. Now, my constituents in Edinburgh, North and Leith, Madam Deputy Speaker, are not known to be shy of an opinion. They've told me how appalled they are at the thought of unconventional gas, gas exploitation damaging our local shores. I agree with them, and I welcome the cautious, evidence-led and transparent approach taken by the Scottish Government to policy on this issue. I would urge the Minister to do the same and put an end to this damaging dash for gas. Yeah. Shadow Minister Roberta Blackman. Uh, thank you.